Chapter 24, A Storybook Finish. Alex was gone. Dorothy Toad and the rest of the Cyclone infielders stood huddled around where he had been at first base. There was nothing but footprints in the dirt to prove Alex had never been there at all. Please, Dorothy begged the fairy godmother, help him, bring him back. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I can't, I can turn pumpkins into coaches and mice into footmen, but I can't make a lark into something he's not. No magic can do that. I'm sorry, I truly am. This is why most teams don't use larks, you know. Dorothy didn't care what most teams did or didn't do. She didn't care what anybody else in the stadium or Emerald City or all of ever after did. She dropped to her knees and cried, big fat tears that plopped into the dust like meteors leaving craters on the moon. We'll wait then, she said. We'll wait until he comes back. At the top of the reaper's dugout steps, the big bed wolf cleared his throat. I'm afraid we must play on, dear, the fairy godmother told her. Toad put a hand on Dorothy's shoulder. They shall sing songs of him, he told her, but only it made her cry again. We'll wait, she said again. He'll come back. Brett and Bright came back once or twice before he... But in Bright's in a book, old girl, there was always a chance someone new would come along and discover him. But Alex? Toad didn't have to say any more. I would just like to remind everyone that my team has lost many of its players without causing an interruption, the wolf said. We have a game to finish, unless the Cyclones want to forfeit. Dorothy dragged the backs of her wrists across her eyes, smudging them with dirt and tears. No, she said. We're not quitting. Not now. So Tiggy Winkle shift over towards second. Jack, she began, but she couldn't finish. I know what to do, Jack said. He tapped his head. Alex taught me everything. I suppose with my charge gone, my mission is at an end, Nanny May said, her metal hat in her hand. I'll stay on, though, until I get a new marching orders for the team. For the team. Toad and Jack helped Dorothy to her feet, and she climbed back up on the mound and tried to see TikTok through her watery eyes. The only, they only needed two more outs. She took a deep breath. I can do this, she thought. First we win, then I can crawl into a hole and never come out. You know, my only regret is that your lark wasn't around long enough for me to eat him, the wolf called from the reaper's dugout. Dorothy's tears turned to ice. Her leg kicked, her arm whipped, and she threw, not pitched, as hard as 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 hard and as fast as she could. There was nothing tricky about it, and the wicked stepsister, even with her hobbled feet, looped a single to left and stumbled her way to first. The reapers had a new base runner. They work, they work, the glass slippers work, the wicked stepsister said in her celebration. She turned an ankle in the ill-fitting shoes and fell down on the bag. The big bed wolf growled. Take off your shoes and run or I'll eat you up, he yelled. And the wicked stepsister quickly did as ordered. But she didn't have to do any running during the next at bat after all. The Japanese trickster, Tanuki, drew a wall and the reapers had runners on first and second with only one out. Dorothy, you need to keep your center of gravity over your waist and snap your wrist as you throw, Jack told her. You're, I know what I'm doing, Dorothy shot back and Jack let her be. The king of Anwin glided to the plate his great skull mask and bone antlers looming tall over TikTok and the umpire. He tapped the dirt from his cleats with his bat and got ready to hit. You can't win, Dorothy, the big bed wolf told her. You needed a lark to beat me, and now you don't even have that. I wonder, will your magic shoes work in the real world? It'll be fun to find out. Rah, Dorothy grunted and threw as hard as she could. The Walsh King of the Dead killed the pitch, driving it down to third baseline. Where Rabbit dove, snared the ball on, on the bounce, and hopped back up. He was too late to get the wicked stepsister at third, so he threw on a second where Tanuki slid at the same time as the ball. Out, cried Merlin. Toad leapfrogged the raccoon dog and threw onto Jack for the double play, but his dress got caught up in Tanuki's paws and the throw went wide. Jack stretched his, stretched his long body out as far as he could and saved the ball from skipping to the stands, but he was pulled off the bag towards home. The king of Anwin was coming fast, only heartbeats away, and Jack swung around to tag him. Gah, he said, backing away. The horns on the skull mask the king wore had already separated, or had already speared Jack, Jack's pumpkin head once that day, and Jack clearly didn't want it to happen again. Use the name, use the name, Toad cried. Jack closed his eyes and said, Arwen, just as they were about to collide, and a bolt of lightning split the air. Karoom. The Welsh King of the Dead burst into flames, and he and the Cyclone's second baseman were swallowed in a ball of fire. Jack, Dorothy cried, but when the flames and the smoke curled away into the sky, Jack was still there, a bit singed, but still there. Whoa, he said. 
I didn't know that would happen. The runner is out, I suppose, the fairy godmother said. The big bad wolf erupted from the reaper's dugout. Illegal use of magic. Illegal use of magic. Throw him out. It's not using magic to say someone's name, Charles Wallace ruled. Even if I suppose saying his name makes him burst into flames. The wolf howled his in anger and started to grow. His reaper's jersey split open at the seams and fell to the ground as he grew larger and larger, dwarfing everyone else in the field. He huffed and he puffed and storm clouds gathered overhead. Fans screamed and ran for the exits and the cyclones braced themselves against the storm. Wolf, Merlin cried, his robes whipping in the wind. Thou hast been warned. If thou attacks anyone in the field, the game shall be forfeited and thou shall be banished to the Black Forest. Tanuki scurried off into the stands to hide among the fans and the great dragon flapped his wings and took the air, abandoning his team. The only reaper left was the wicked stepsister. Left, the wicked stepsister tried to slip away from third base, but the wolf snarled and snapped at her. Stay where you are, he thundered, making his teammate cower. We're going to finish this. When I hit a home run, and I will hit a home run, Dorothy, she will score, and I will score, and you will lose. You will lose everything. I've already lost everything, Dorothy said, the wind carrying her words away. The big bed wolf was as tall as the upper deck now, and he ripped the post from the protective netting behind home plate to use as a bat. Dorothy looked to see if all of her teammates were behind her, but none of them had run away. They were the Cyclones. They were a team, even to the last. In the twisting tornado, Dorothy found a kind of peace. She was Dorothy Gale, after all. She knew a thing or two about riding out a cyclone. The wolf was giant sized now, and it didn't matter if she pitched her through. She aimed high and lobbed the ball through the swirling winds to pass through the wolf's strike zone, and Tick-Tock ran it down to the other side of the plate. Strike one, Charles Wallace called out over the windstorm. You think you can win, Dorothy, the wolf told her, but you can't. Dorothy lobbed the ball again, and, ag and again, the wolf didn't swing. Strike two. You think this is a game, but it isn't. You cannot beat me, the wolf told her. No one can. He was playing with her again, letting her think she was doing well. But the wolf was always there in the end, waiting to get you. He was always going to win. Dorothy saw that now. Still, there was nothing to do but play the game. As the wind that had first carried her to Oz swirled around her, Dorothy reached back and threw. The ball twisted and turned in the, the gale. The wolf hitched his bat. Alex, Jack Pumpkinhead cried, and there Alex was standing at first. He blinked, staring down at his glove as his mop of hair whipped around his head and as though he didn't know where he had gone or how long he had been there. But Alex was back. The wolf's eyes flashed to Alex, distracted them back to the ball. And as the pitch came bending in, he hurried his swing and hit underneath it, sending it high, high, high into the churning storm above the infield. He and the Cyclones watched it until they could no longer see it. And only then did the big bed wolf realize he should run. Who's got it? Who's got it? Jack cried, the only one of them to keep his head. Dorothy, Br'er Rabbit, Toad, Jack, Tick Tock. None of them could see it. Worse, the winds were so strong now they could barely stay on their feet. Tick Tock was the heaviest of them, and the infielders grabbed hold of him so they wouldn't be swept away. In the outfield, Pinkerton snatched up scraps to fly her to safety, and Nanny Mae deployed another parachute and flew up into the sky. Alex was the last of the outfielders to grab onto the chain of cyclones, grabbing Dorothy's hand just before they were all lifted by the wind like a kite with steadfast tick-tock as their anchor. The wicked stepsister scored and ran away. Unless someone caught the ball, hers was tying the, hers was the tying run. The winning run, the big bad wolf, fought against his own storm and rounded first with a huge thundering stride. What's the score? Alex yelled to Dorothy over the roar of the wind. Ten to nine. How many outs? Two. The big bed wolf rounded the second and leaned into the wind, headed for third. We have to get that ball, Alex yelled. Dorothy shook her head. We can't, Alex. We can't beat him. It's over. No, it's not. Not until I'm gone. He looked up into the eddy of the storm clouds above them. Dorothy, you have to let me go. What? No, she yelled, holding his hand even tighter. We just got you back. What's the worst that could happen, Alex asked her. You could be thrown ten miles from here. You could die. Alex smiled at her. Dying was nothing to him, and they both knew it. He was a lark. You could disappear for good, and now I'd never see you again, Dorothy said, finally admitting why she wouldn't let go. So what do we do? Just crawl off to the wild woods and quit, or do we play the game? The big bed wolf made the turn at third and headed for home. Dorothy, Alex told her, you have to let me go. Dorothy closed her eyes, the wind whipping tears, or whipping tears from her face. Very slowly, she opened her hand, and Alex slipped from her fingers away and up into the storm.